Welcome to the Reconnection Club podcast, the show that helps parents heal troubled relationships with their adult sons and daughters. I'm your host, psychotherapist Tina Gilbertson. Each week, I'll offer you compassion, clarity, and personal development tips designed to help you reconnect not only with your child, but with yourself. Now, let's get started. According to the online dictionary, one definition of the word trauma is any situation or series of events having vivid, emotional, conflicting, or striking interest or results. And in that sense, any story of family estrangement could be considered a dramatic story. It has nothing to do with anyone creating drama by behaving in a melodramatic way. It's just a situation that's full of emotion and conflict, both external and internal. Hence, estrangement is inherently dramatic. And the thing about dramatic stories is they tend to have two types of characters, good guys and bad guys. There's always a hero, and often there's also a villain, which raises an uncomfortable question. In the story of your adult child's estrangement, who is the hero and who is the villain? Now, if you're at all uncomfortable with that question, I'm glad to hear it because it is an uncomfortable question, and rightly so. But before I talk about why I think that is, I should say also that it is a natural question to ask. If my own child is rejecting me, does that mean I'm bad? Because if I'm not, then my child must be the bad guy in this story. Either way, there's no satisfying answer. Most of us don't think of ourselves as the bad guy in any of the stories we live. But neither do most parents relish the idea that their child or children are bad. The lack of clarity and the distress that comes from choosing a hero and a villain in parent-adult child estrangement points to the limitations of black and white thinking about good guys and bad guys. If it's true that parents suffer when their children suffer, and we know it is, then estrangement by adult children creates ambiguity for parents. First of all, villains are not usually happy people. So if your child is the bad guy in this estrangement, that means he or she is not particularly happy. And of course, that affects your happiness too. So even if you're the good guy, You can't enjoy your goodness because it means your child is trapped in the misery of badness. Some people cope with the difficulty of assigning the roles of hero and villain by jumping back and forth between them. Sometimes they blame themselves for the estrangement and let their adult child be the hero of the story, and sometimes it's the other way around. The only escape from this unhappy exercise is to turn away from the black and white thinking of hero versus villain toward a broader and more compassionate view of the situation. What if you are the hero of your story and your child is the hero of her story? And what if you're both right to see yourselves that way? In your child's story, you may be playing the role of the villain, not because you've never done anything for him or because you're incompetent or evil, but because in some important way, he's not getting something he wants or needs from you, even if it's just space. And your child can be the villain of your story, not because she was born bad, but because she's hurt your feelings with her emotional or physical distancing and maybe because her behavior reminds you of other villains from your past. Both of you can be heroes and good people and still play the role of villain in each other's stories. That's because very few of us are heroes or villains, but all of us can play either role. If you think of villains and heroes not as actual people, but as parts in a play, It may be easier to accept when, in someone else's story, you're assigned a part you didn't want and don't identify with, because you can be sure that the roles that you assign to others in your story don't always match up with how they see themselves, either. 
This is not meant to be a philosophical or moral argument. Instead, what I'm offering is a mindset to facilitate relationship repair. That's what this podcast and my work is all about. Everything I talk about is designed to help you and your child heal your relationship. Abandoning the good guy, bad guy dichotomy is a practical step you can take right now to set the stage, as it were, for reconciliation. Refuse to assign hero and villain roles for your estrangement. Better yet, assign both roles to everyone involved. Of course, you can't control how your child views his estrangement, but by refusing to think in terms of villains versus heroes, you will bring much-needed understanding and compassion to what I hope and suspect is a challenging but temporary relationship difficulty in your lives. Until next time, remember that you are a loving, lovable, and still growing human being. So please take good care of yourself. Bye for now. If you've enjoyed this episode of the Reconnection Club podcast, I invite you to check out ReconnectionClub.com. The Reconnection Club is for parents at any stage of estrangement from their adult, child, or children. So whether you've just realized there's trouble between you, you've been living with estrangement for years, or you're newly reconciled but still walking on eggshells, The Reconnection Club is your essential resource for information, support, and continued personal growth. With our courses and workshops, expert interviews, monthly Q&A calls, and a friendly, active community, The Reconnection Club is a wonderful place to be for anyone suffering the pain of estrangement from an adult, child, or children. So check it out at ReconnectionClub.com.